This is video two for chapter 15, but it covers uh, section 15.3, volume of spheres. So we've already talked about cylinders and cones, and now we're going to do spheres. This link here is a really, really good YouTube video that kind of explains how we get the formula for the volume of a sphere. Um, but for time and for this video, we are just going to give you the, the formula to find volume of a sphere. So remember, or if you don't remember, a sphere is kind of a three-dimensional circle, okay? So think of the globe or a ball. And the formula for the volume of a sphere, you need to watch this video um, to see how we come up with it, but the volume of a sphere is four-thirds times pi times r cubed, the radius cubed, okay? So let's remember that radius cubed is radius times itself three times. Okay, so all you need to find the volume of any sphere is just the radius. I also want to write down this word, hemisphere. If you cut a sphere in half, so exactly half of a sphere, you get a hemisphere. So you're going to see some problems, um, like for example, down here in our composite shape where we have a hemisphere as part of a composite shape. Okay, so those might pop up as well. It's just going to be exactly half of the volume of the whole sphere. All right, so our first volume is find, or our first example, just find the volume of the sphere. They're giving me the radius here, so I'm going to write down my formula, 4 thirds pi r cubed, and I know I'm going to be typing in 4 for the radius. Okay, once I've got my formula down, I'm really ready to just pick up my calculator. Now, I want to show you how I type these in. I like to start with parentheses and do the 4 over 3 first. So I have my 4 thirds there. Then I just type in my number for pi times, and I'm going to type in the radius of 4 times 4 times 4. Enter. So I get a volume of 267.9. We're just going to round to the nearest tenth. And this would be feet cube. So because we're talking about volume, We've got cubic units, okay? Let's come down <coughs> and we'll do this one. If the diameter is 12, we know we need to cut that in half to get the radius. So I'm going to write my formula down again, 4 thirds pi r cubed, and I know I'm going to be typing in 6 for the radius. So let's do 4 thirds, 3.14 times 6 times 6 times 6. And I get that the volume is 904.32 cubic units, so meters cubed. Okay? So go ahead. You can do number two and number four. Start by writing the formula, and then you can type it into your calculator. Okay? So do two and four, and then we'll check when you're ready. Okay, here's the answers I got for number two when I typed in a radius of 10. And for number four, when I used a radius of 11, right? Cut your diameter in half to get the radius if you need to. All right, the next example, we're going to use the formula and we're going to work backwards to get the radius, okay? So, again, we have our formula up here. 4 thirds pi r cubed is the formula for volume. So if they tell me the volume, I can just write down that that's equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. And we're going to be working backwards or canceling things out until we get r by itself. So the first thing we can do, if you notice, they tell us the volume is 288 pi. Well, that was helpful because the pi over there cancels with the pi over here. Okay, so they do that for a reason to save you a step. Now I see that I have 288 equals 4 thirds pi cubed. Well, I want to get rid of this 4 thirds. We talked way back at the beginning of the ch of this school year how we can cancel out a fraction if we multiply by the reciprocal. So if I cancel out this 4 thirds, right, the 4 and the 4 and the 3 and the 3 cancel by doing that, I can do the same thing over here. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. And now everything except for the r cubed is canceled out. And I have this r cubed, and then I need to just type in uh, 3 fourths of 288, 
or we know that 3 fourths is the same as uh, 0.75, so it's probably easier just to type in 0.75 times 288, and I got 216. Okay, now I have the R cubed on this side, so I still have to do some work. I still have to take the cube root to cancel out the cube, okay, to get R all by itself. So I got to do the same thing on both sides, take the cube root here, and this is why we covered chapter 14 before this, so we know how to take the cube root, and when I type that into my calculator, I get 6, okay? So I'll show you again if you don't remember how to type it in. On my calculator, I have to type 3, so my calculator knows it's doing the cube root. This green key, this little button tells me I'm taking the cube root of 216, and I got 6. So that's my radius. And you can always check your answer, right? Plug it back in and make sure you get the answer they gave you up here. All right, I'll do one more. So I'm going to write down, here's my volume, and that's equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay? I know the way they set it up for me here, this pi is going to cancel with that pi. So I'm ready just to cancel out my 4 thirds. Okay? So I'm going to use the decimal again. 0 0.75, 0 0.75, multiply by 0 0.75 on both sides. Okay? Then your fraction, your four-thirds and your three-fourths cancel out. I did that in my calculator and I got 0.75 times 36 is 27 and that equals my r cubed. So then I'm ready to take the cube root of both sides and the cube root of 27 is 3. Okay, so your job is to set up the formula for this one. Write the formula down this is supposed to be a pi. I didn't have a good way to type it in. And solve for r. So pause and do this one now. Practice on your own. Okay, I wrote down 972 pi equals, and here's my uh, formula for the volume of a sphere. The pi's cancel out. Then I know to cancel out this 4 thirds, I'm going to be multiplying by 3 fourths, or 0.75, on both sides. That gave me 729. And then over here, everything was canceled out except for the r cubed. So I'm ready to take the cube root of both sides to get the radius by itself. Okay? All right. Last bit here is some composite shapes where we see spheres and hemispheres. Okay? So <clears throat> here I have a, a cylinder with this hemisphere kind of scooped out. So we know we're going to be subtracting the volume of this hemisphere to get what's left for just this part. Okay, So I'm going to start by looking at my circle. I'm going to write capital B because I know this area of the circle, capital B, is going to be important for the cylinder and the sphere. So I'm going to go ahead and find that. And that would be, so I have a radius of 3.5. So 3.5 times 3.5 times pi, right? Just to get the area of that circle, the base circle. And I got that, that comes out to 38.465. Okay, so to find the volume of the cylinder first, let's find that. So I'm gonna write cylinder. I know I'm gonna do capital B times five, right? Times the height. So when I type that in, the cylinder comes out to 192.325, okay? So I did area of the base times the height. That gives me the volume of the cylinder. And then I've got to find the volume of this hemisphere, okay? So I'm going to write hemisphere. Let's find that. Well, I know my formula. It's going to be 4 thirds times pi times r cubed. And I know my R is three and a half, so I'm ready to just type that in. So, four thirds, whoops, four thirds, then pi, then my radius of 3.5 times 3.5 times 3.5, okay? So I get 179, but it's only a hemisphere. It's only half of the sphere. So I need to divide that by two in order to get the volume of just this half of a sphere. 
So 89, we'll say, we'll say 80, whoops, 89.75. And I know I'm going to subtract that because I'm scooping it out of the volume. So 192.325 minus the answer I just got, and I get 10257. So this doesn't have any units, but it would be cubic units there. Okay? All right. So there's one more for you. This one you need to do as practice. This one has a cylinder, but plus, right, plus the hemisphere on the top. It's going to be the cylinder plus the hemisphere to get the total volume. So go ahead and pause and then find this volume and check when you are ready. Okay, so I first made a note that my radius here was 12 because they were giving me the diameter of 24. I found the area of the circle, right? So the area of the circle would be 12 times 12 times 3.14. And I use that as capital B, the area of the base, times 30 to get the volume of the cylinder. Okay, so capital B times 30 gave me this. And then I had the hemisphere again. So I typed into my calculator, right, 4 thirds times pi times 12 times 12 times 12, but divided by 2 because it's only a hemisphere. So make sure you're careful here. Divide this by 2. Hemisphere gave me this. And then I added them together to get my total. Okay? All right, so for spheres, we can use the radius to find the volume. We can start with the volume and work backwards to get the radius. And we can find volume of composite shapes that might have, you know, cylinders, spheres, um, and cones all put together.